Uh, curved, it's a Romanian pan flute. If you look at this fountain back there, it has been pointed out there are two what look like boys on either side. They're a little bit unusual in that they do represent pan, in that they have the hindquarters and leg and horns of a goat. And the one on the left, <laughs> incidentally, pan does represent all the things mentioned. But usually the word fertility is in there too. <laughs> like a goat, you know what you want to say. And so uh, the one on the left is indeed holding a pan flute. Um, the pan flute is believed to be the second oldest musical instrument that has been played by mankind. Coming right after banging things together like sticks or drums or something like that. Every ancient culture on this earth has developed the pan flute. Throughout uh, the, well, the word pan, of course, is Greek and shows it was in Europe, but throughout all of Asia, Near East, China, Japan, uh, the North and South of Vietnam, uh, all of Africa, all of South America, <laughs> on into places where men didn't have much contact with each other, throughout the islands of Polynesia, and on into Australia and New Zealand. They all had the pan flute, including the American Indian developed the use of pan flute. Indeed, in Colombia, South America, you know, the high altitudes where things are often really preserved, they have found a pan flute that was 8,000 years old. So, uh, the Egyptian pyramids had carvings inside of them of people playing pan flutes. Now, our song for today is an old tune you all know very well, you, even if you don't recognize it as I play it. It was developed and played first in Northern Ireland, uh, where it was called an air, because an air is a song, a melody. Uh, it came from the county Derry, D-E-R-R-Y. So it was known for a long, long time as, you got it, a derriere. Okay? <laughs> Sometimes called the London derriere. Uh, I always wanted to play a derriere. <laughs> there are at least five Christian hymns that use this melody. Uh, and in fact, at the funeral of Princess Diana, Princess of Wales, this tune was played. It was not uh, the words that you are familiar with. In fact, they played it to the hymn, I Would Be True, but it was this melody. So the words that you know and are going to be real familiar with were written in 1910. So here it is, the derriere. <laughs>
it seems so simple, right? Just yeah. refurbishing the fountain and getting a bench on order. Yet the process has taken almost two years. And I would like to introduce and thank Denise Ford, the artist. There she is. She And I guess you did some research, and and yes. I mean, she could not have done a better job. So she is to be thanked. <laughs> fabulous job. Thank you. Couldn't have turned out more beautiful. <laughs> she recently got married. So. <laughs> <laughs> Peter Walter, are you here? Peter, yes. Great. I've talked to him several times. I've never actually laid eyes on him, but I know Debbie has. We need to thank Peter Walter. He connected the artist with Dad and assisted in working with the city folks to get this completed. He knew the movers and the shakers to get this done. We would not be standing here today without his help. And he has been such a huge friend of this park, as well as many things here in Tulsa. He's a Tulsa icon himself. Um, he's contributed many projects and updates throughout the park, and he's very quiet about it, but we need to thank Peter very much. We had a couple city people with, that were with the Parks and Recreation Department, Joe Robertson and Mark Lindholm. I'm not sure if they're here. They're probably working right now. <laughs> of course he did. As you can Sprung a leak, so Mark is out there trying to locate the key to turn the water off. So they were hugely instrumental in helping this, get this all together too, and they couldn't have done a more fabulous job. I mean, the, the beautiful uh, benches and the cement placement, the, the whole thing is just gorgeous. So thank you. And special thanks go to this lady, Georgie. She is the lady. Park setting, the beautiful flowers, the paradise that she's created. Now, granted, we're right in the middle of winter, and all those things have just been recently on, uh, uh, done. She's done such a beautiful job, but you should see it in the summertime. You all must come back in the summer and see this lady's work. There's benches now, so you can sit and take it all in. But she does fabulous work, and I want to thank you because it is a paradise, true paradise, right here. You're very I have one thing well, who came down and pitched in and, and really helped put everything together and, and everything. So I'll thanks to them as well. As Dad began the process of donating the fountain and bench for Mom, we, his children, wanted to also do something in his honor. And so we did come up with the other bench in Poppy's honor, much to his surprise. Yeah. So, Pops, is there anything you want to share? Well, I just my toe saying something, or I, you know, I want to say something, but it comes out different. But first of all, Julie was the coordinator of between me and all the agencies and whatever, including Mr. Walters. I have difficulty hearing, so she took over and done everything to make this happen. She also it was her idea. It was her idea to have a dedication of and she thought it was to be just the family, but as it always happens, <laughs> friends, and I'm glad you came. <laughs> By your presence, you honor me personally. And I better get my notes and uh -oh. I prepare some notes <laughs> because I'm afraid to blunder. <laughs> so here it goes. Welcome everyone and everybody. You honor me with your presence. It took perhaps but one hour for thieves to dig up and steal the two fawns, the cherub with the pan flute and the cherub holding the cart, the fountain spout. 
four years, four years 